What is going on everyone? Welcome back to TTP Sports. And I wanted to give the news a couple days just to settle in, people to read what's going on, get the facts straight, and for me to formulate a proper opinion on what I think about the whole situation. So a couple days ago, we all know that Major League Baseball, the Players Association, and the owners finally agreed to something to play a 60-game season to finish off the 2020 regular season, and also the playoffs as well. So Spring Training 2.0, it's honestly a couple days away. It's June 27th right now. It's going to start on July 1st. So with Spring Training 2.0, every team in Major League Baseball is going to report to their home facilities in their cities. So you got the Philadelphia Phillies, they're going to be playing at Citizens Bank Park, Yankees at Yankee Stadium, Red Sox at Fenway, Dodgers at Dodger, St Dodger Stadium, etc. So we're going to be seeing some spring training in Philadelphia, which is going to be nice for a change. We're going to be seeing baseball, which is nice for a change. But then for like other teams, what about the uh, Toronto Blue Jays? Because I think the Canadian government doesn't want to risk the team playing in Toronto, so I think they're going to be playing in one of their minor league affiliate stadiums in Buffalo. So I think that's where they're going to be playing spring training and the regular season. But then what about the teams in Florida, the Miami Marlins and the Tampa Bay Rays? And what about the Arizona Diamondbacks? Are they going to be forced to play in their home ballparks, even though the states of Florida and Arizona, their numbers continue to spike as the days go on with COVID, COVID cases? So that's, I would assume they're probably going to be forced to play in their home stadiums, but that's, an, that's something to talk about maybe as the days go on. But then let's get into some of the other news, which is going on with this 60-game schedule. So in terms of the scheduling and the division setup, so they're making it so there's going to be less travel as possible. So each division from each league is going to play each other. So the National League East is going to play the American League East. Both Central Divisions are going to play each other. Same thing with both West Divisions. They are going to play each other as well. So from a Philadelphia Phillies standpoint, the Phillies are going to be playing the, the Nationals, the Braves, the Mets, and the Marlins. And then when they play against the American League East, you can probably toss it up. Because I don't think they're going to be playing every a lot of games against every American League team. It'll probably be a select few. So you can get the choices from either the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees, the Tampa Bay Rays, Toronto Blue Jays, the Baltimore Orioles. It's really a toss-up right there. Because I feel like they're going to schedule that based on, like, the normal regular schedule on how they do interleague play because I think from the Phillies point they usually play Toronto and Boston yearly in interleague play so I'm assuming we're going to see both Boston and the Blue Jays it's just on who are they who else are they going to play in interleague play and I think for the terms of the scheduling I think they're going to do 40 games against the National League East and then the rest the last 20 games will be interleague play so I don't think they're going to do like 50 and 10. I don't think they're going to do a 30-30 split, half games against the National League East and the American League East. So it's really until like they sort out the schedule, because I don't think the actual schedule has released yet. They're probably not going to release anything until we're into spring training. So that's probably still a few days down the road. And then like for other news that's going on and what they're going to implement into Major League Baseball for the season. So we all know... The Universal DH is going to be brought in for both leagues. So the American League, that's been there for infinity. So now it's going to be implemented into the National League as well. And I know there's like a bunch of mixed feelings about the DH in the National League. But th I feel like this is going to be more for a testing thing. So I'm not sure if they're going to bring this in full time. So maybe they're going to test this out, see how it works for this season. They may maybe implement it for future seasons. But... There's still a lot of mixed review, well, mixed uh, opinions about this. Some fans, the, like the older generation of fans, don't like the DH in the National League. They like seeing the split between each league. But then there's also a thing maybe like, I, I'm not sure this is probably a thing to make the, league sh the game shorter, but this is something for so pitchers don't waste that bats so you can get a bench guy in the DH role to get some hitting. And then maybe a guy that's not as good in the field, he can play, play that DH spot permanently so he only has to worry about getting at bats and from a Philly standpoint like who do you think would be the DH for that team does Reese Hoskins maybe he takes a break from first base and he can only focus about hitting because oh his last season that was just brutal at the end of the year and then what do you maybe Jay Bruce can be the DH as well maybe for right-handed pitcher to put Reese Hoskins in there for left-handed pitching even though like I think the splits last year for Reese Hoskins he was better against right-handed pitchers but that's really going to be a coin toss on what Joe Girardi is going to do with the DH role. And then also maybe 
for JT Real Muto. Maybe if he needs a day off from in the catcher position, he goes into the DH spot. Or maybe he plays first base and you put Reese Hoskins in that DH spot. And then for the infield situation, what about, we all know Didi Gregorius, our free agent acquisition, is going to be the starting shortstop. What about third base? What about second base? I'm in here in that Gene Segura. He's lost a lot of weight from spring training in, during the stoppage because he cut off the alcohol. So I think he's also told Joel Girardi that he wants to play that third base position. So is Gene Segura going to be playing that position? And then we put Scott Kingery in his natural position at second base. Will he be more comfortable there instead of playing at every spot in the field, being that utility guy? And then what up? What about the outfield? We all know Bryce Harper is going to be that starting right fielder. That's just going to be obvious. This, he's completely underrated, and a lot of people say he's overrated, but that's another discussion for another day, which I'm not going to get into. And then what about your center field position? Is it going to be Roman Quinn? Is it going to be Adam Hazley? We all know Roman Quinn, the situation with him, he's a great runner. He has one of the most dyna dynamic runners on our team. But the problem with him is he can't stay healthy. He, he's basically made a glass at this point. And then what about Adam Hazley? He got a lot of start last season, so does Joe Girardi implement him as the starting center fielder? Or is it going to be a 50-50 split between the two guys? And then the, the reason for Andrew McCutcheon in left field, is he going to be healthy enough coming off of that ACL injury last season? Is he going to be fully 100% going into the season and also spring training? And then... Also, for the starting rotation, what is that going to be like? Are we going to get our number one ace, Aaron Nola? Is he going to be his Cy Young self? Is he going to be the last year where he struggled a little bit? Or is he going to be a little bit of a mix in between? We need a more consistent Aaron Nola. And then one of our other big free agent acquisitions, Zach Wheeler. Are we going to get his first half struggling self where he's not as good? Or are we going to get the second half version of Zach Wheeler where he's more dominant on the mound and he's more consistent? Maybe since we're only in a 60-game schedule and it's a major push to get into the postseason, maybe Zach Wheeler finds that second-half version of himself and finds more consistency. And then Jake Arrieta, his injury that he had last season, uh, even though myself, I don't have high hopes for him, but maybe he can find some consistency because that's we don't need dominance from him. We just need some type of consistency from Jake Arrieta. And then the fourth and fifth spot in the rotation, that's basically just, just a coin toss at this point. Nick Pavetta, Vince Velasquez, Zach Eflin, who knows, maybe uh, Spencer Howard, one of our top prospects, maybe he does something in spring training to force himself into the starting rotation, because I don't think any minor league team is going to be playing baseball this season. I think it's just going to be Major League Baseball. So maybe Spencer Howard can find himself in the fourth, fifth spot of the rotation, Maybe you can have Aaron Nola, Zach Wheeler, Jake Arrieta, Spencer Howard, maybe a Zach Eflin. And then you throw Pavetta and Vel Velasquez into the bullpen. And the bullpen in general, what the hell is that going to look like? How is that going to act up? How is that going to act out? How is Joe Girardi going to utilize that bullpen the proper way, unlike Gabe Kapler? And then the whole, and speaking of the bullpen, one of the other rules that's going to be implemented this season the relievers that come in, they have to face a three batter minimum. So how will, is the strategy going to change when bringing in someone from the bullpen? Because I know once they face that th those three batters, then you can take them out of the game. But I think if like a person comes in when there's two outs and they get that final out, they don't have to worry about the three batter minimum. So it's like slightly confusing, but you can understand it at the same time. So like how is Joe Girardi going to implement the bullpen with that three batter minimum? And also, one of the newer rules that were added for this season, so it can shorten the games out if they go into extra innings, because I know this season the league does not want teams going deep into extra innings like the 15th inning, like the 20th inning, just so players can be more rested because it's such a short season and there's not going to be as many day offs as there should be, so we don't want games going as much longer than they need to. So when extra innings start, each team, each half inning, there's going to be a runner on second base for each team, and that is probably going to shorten the games out. It's definitely going to shorten them out because it's going to fix the strategy a little bit, the drive and the runner, get that run in, and try to close out the game. So I know there's a lot of people that don't like that situation with the runner on second base, but for this season specifically, it works because there's not so many days off, players need as much rest as possible, and you need to get, get these games as short as possible so no player gets overly worked. And I, I like it for this season. 
I'm not sure how it would work in a full 162 game season, but that's something for when we get to that road. And then for health and safety concerns, I know MLB is not doing anything like you can't spit. You can't spit in the dugout, you can't spit on the field, and for a pitching-wise, you can't lick your fingertips and put them on the ball because that's spreading germs, and you don't want spreading germs around everywhere. So for pitchers, when they go to the mound, they are allowed to bring their own wet rag, and that's what they can use to moisten their fingers to get a better grip on the baseball. And then for other means of contact, you're not allowed to high-five, you're not allowed to fist bump, and you're not allowed to hug people, and you still got to find a way to maintain that six feet distance and I think for players who are not playing the game in the dugout they have to wear a facial mask so they're trying to find ways to be as safe as possible so we can get as less sickness as possible and also like for going into spring training people players are going to get tested for regular temperature checks just to make sure they don't carry any symptoms and once the season starts players are going to get tested twice a day for temperature checks and make sure they don't have any symptoms and I think if a player tests positive, they have to go into quarantine immediately. And I think they need like at least two days of negative tests for them to, get, to come back into the lineup. So they need two tests sp stranded over, I think, 24 hours apiece in order for them to come back into the lineup so that they can play. So it's definitely going to be an interesting Major League season. Hopefully it can be really exciting since it's only 60 games. It's going to be a major push for the playoffs. And from a Philly standpoint, am I expecting much? Not really, but I'm going to be very excited nonetheless because it's baseball. I love watching baseball. I want to see Bryce Harper go out there. I want to see Aaron Nola pitching meaningful games. And I want to see Joe Girardi managing a Phillies game. I want to see that really badly. So that's going to be it for this video. What are your thoughts on Major League Baseball coming back? What are your thoughts on the new rule changes? And what do you think your respective teams are going to do? with this shortened schedule. Do you like the new rules? What do you think your teams are going to do? Don't forget to leave your comments in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time, everyone.